Welcome to the October 2024 edition of the Growing Chatham podcast. I'm Tiffany Hancock from North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center. For links to registrations, articles, or videos referenced in today's podcast, just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing chatham 1024. Let's kick off October with some general updates from our office and our community partners. Cooperative Extension staff will be on hand to assist clients and the public on the afternoon of October 9th. However, due to the Cycle NC event taking place at the Chatham County Agricultural and Conference Center, we will close our doors for walk-in assistance at noon because of the anticipated high volume of visitors. We encourage you to continue reaching out to our staff as needed, but we advise clients to avoid visiting the extension extension office that day due to expected traffic congestion and increased pedestrian and bicycle activity. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to learn more about the Cycle NC event. It's that time of year again to head out and cast your vote. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter for information on early voting locations, days, dates, and hours. Note that this year, photo IDs will be mandatory to vote. The North Carolina State Fair is returning October 17th through the 27th, 2024, Homegrown Happiness. Start planning your trip to the North Carolina State Fair when you click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Chatham Community Library Bike Rodeo is coming up, so join us for fun and an exciting day with Curious George. Create smoothies using a blender bike and enjoy many more fun activities. There will be bike-themed crafts, a pop-up traffic garden, and free helmets provided by Safe Kids Chatham County. Don't forget to visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to access the links in the stories and videos that are mentioned in this month's podcast by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1024. Now let's move on to find out what's happening with Chatham County 4-H. Chatham County celebrated a successful 4-H livestock show on September 21st at the Chatham County Ag and Conference Center. The event, co-sponsored regionally by Ag Carolina Farm Credit and Ag South Farm Credit, was sponsored locally in Chatham County by Chatham County Farm Bureau Quality Equipment of Pittsburgh and the United Way of Chatham County. Many thanks to all of our volunteers and supporters who helped make the day such a success. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter for a detailed overview of the showmanship results. Interested in learning about electricity? Want to build some circuits and learn how to solder? Join us on October 15th at the Chatham County Center for an exciting 4-H fun with a STEM event. For more information, check out the Growing Chatham newsletter. National 4-H Week is coming up October 6th through the 12th, 2024. 120 years ago, we were ready. Ready to get our hands dirty. Ready to learn by doing. Ready to push the power of youth forward. And as our inspiration grew, so did we. When we expanded into every corner of America, we were ready. Ready to ask questions about the world. To show up for our community. To become the leaders we were always meant to be. And when we evolved into the unstoppable force we are today, we are ready. Ready to open our arms to every opportunity, every path, and every child. Generation after generation. Over six million of us have been inspired by 4-H. It's time to inspire six million more. We were ready then, we are beyond ready now. After all, it's always been in our DNA. Beyond ready for school, beyond ready for work, beyond ready for life, and everything that comes with it. This is our 4-H declaration. All Around Horse Sense 4-H Clinic coming in November. So save the date, Saturday, November 9th, 2024. 4-H youth ages 8 through 18 years old in the North Central District. All around Horse Sense Clinic in Colfax, North Carolina. So join us for a fun-filled day of learning from judges, vets, 
and even sessions for parents. No horse experience required. Registration will be coming out soon. For more information, just click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. 4-H Kids Voting is coming to Chatham County. Kids Voting Election Days are coming up. Kids Voting offers an authentic voting experience for youth under 18 to participate in sharing their voice as they vote in a mock election that mirrors the upcoming election. This year, we will offer voting at the following locations and times. October 28th, from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Chatham Community Library in Pittsburgh. October 30th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Wren Memorial Library, Salar City. And November 1st from 3 until 5 p.m. at the Golston Public Library. You can learn more by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. By visiting go.ncsu.edu edu forward slash growing chatham one zero two four let's move on to our home gardening section with horticulture agent matt jones and the chatham county master gardeners join us for spring flowering bulbs webinar on october 15th 2024 from 6 p.m until 7 30 p.m Flowering bulbs can provide a splash of color in your garden in early spring. When planted in masses, especially in complementary colors, the effect can be stunning. Join Matt Jones, Extension Horticulture Agent, for a free online webinar about selecting, planting, and growing spring flowering bulbs in your garden or landscape. Learn about the biology of different kinds of vegetative structures that we call bulbs, including true bulbs, corms, rhizomes, tubers, and tuberous roots. We'll cover how to plant, grow, and care for tulips, daffodils, and many, many more. You must register for this online webinar by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. These classes are part of the Extension Gardener series of workshops that are open to everyone. Have you seen Wild Flowers of the Atlantic Southeast? This beautiful book is a functional tool to help you identify wild flowers. Organized by flower color, you can fan through 1,250 species quickly or use the simple straightforward key at the front of the book to identify a plant. Written by Laura Cotterman, botanist and editor. Damon Waite, Director of the North Carolina Botanical Garden, and Alan Weekly, Director of the UNC Chapel Hill Herbarium. The book includes over 1,300 color images and 1,200 range maps. The Fascinating Climate, Geography, and Natural Communities section has rich descriptions and illustrative images. Inside the front and back covers are drawings of botanical terms to describe leaves, flowers, and fruits, providing everything you need to identify wild flowers, including a ruler in inches and centimeters. This book is available through the Botanical Garden gift store, as well as local and online bookstores. You can click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter to the Botanical Garden gift store. Quick tips for navigating the online version of the North Carolina Extension Gardener Handbook. This two-minute video introduces you to the online version of the handbook and provides suggestions for searching quickly. You can find this video in the growing Chatham newsletter. Access the North Carolina Extension Gardener Handbook. North Carolina Extension Gardener Handbook, the national award-winning online searchable gardening and landscape reference, is available for free online. A fundamental reference for any seasoned gardener, it is also written to appeal to beginners just getting their hands dirty. It explains the why and how basics of gardening, from soils and composting to vegetable gardening and wildlife management. Advice on garden design, preparation, and maintenance covers all types of plantings including lawns, ornamentals, fruits, trees, and containers. 728 pages, 1,067 color images, one map, 109 tables, and a glossary. You can learn more about the online reference as well as the print version by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. 
The Venus flytrap, a North Carolina native, it surely has the coolest name in the plant kingdom. The Venus flytrap. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's not just the name. It's just a really cool plant. It's a plant with teeth. It's a predator that eats flesh. The Venus flytrap, one of the most famous and fabled plants on the planet, originates from the subtropical wetlands of the Carolina coast. Its native range is within a roughly 70-mile radius of Wilmington. You can check out the Venus flytrap video when you visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1024. Here are some sustainable agriculture updates from Extension Agent Debbie Roos. Check out the photos from Extension's Pollinator Workshop and Native Plant Sale. On September 13th, 2024, the Chatham County Center of North Carolina Cooperative Extension conducted a workshop on landscaping for pollinators and other wildlife at the Chatham County Agriculture and Conference Center in Pittsburgh. Approximately 185 participants from 26 North Carolina counties plus Florida and Virginia attended the five-hour workshop taught by sustainable agriculture agent Debbie Roos. The afternoon was dedicated to a native plant sale on site featuring Chatham County's four native plant nurseries, Dutch Buffalo Farm, Growing Wild Nursery, Mellow Marsh Farm, and Rachel's Native Plants. The sale attracted hundreds of shoppers from the Piedmont area who turned out even in the rain, which of course the plants did not mind one bit. If you missed the sale, visit the nursery's websites to check out what days and hours they are opened. Fall is an excellent time for planting, especially the months of October and November. Visit Cooperative Extension's Growing Small Farms website to view the photos and to access the links to our local nurseries by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. You are invited to attend the 50th Annual Conference of North Carolina Greenhouse Vegetable Growers Association, October 29th and 30th, 2024. The first day of the conference reel tour, the Mountain Horticultural Crops Research and Extension Center at 455 Research Center, Mills River, North Carolina. The tour will begin at 10 a.m. and conclude at 12. The second day of the conference will take place at the Guilford County Extension Office, 33. 09 Burlington Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27405. An excellent program is planned this year, including keynote speaker Bob Hall, Bush and Vine Farms from York, South Carolina. The program will include a segment for the introduction of exhibitors. In addition, growers will have time to visit exhibitors during the breaks and luncheon. We look forward to seeing you at the conference. Just click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to access the conference program and registration packet. If you should have any questions, contact Kathy Price Horton. 919-413-9544. For full details, you can visit the website by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Register now for an Ag Ventures Grant Online Workshop. North Carolina Ag Ventures is a North Carolina state extension program that provides grants to North Carolina farmers and community groups for new and innovative agricultural project ideas that will increase farm profits. The program, which is supported by the North Carolina Tobacco Trust Fund Commission, will award a minimum of 40 grants to independent family farms. This is a great opportunity for any producer who is thinking of diversifying, improving, or expanding their operations. North Carolina Ag Ventures will award grants up to $8,000. The program will start accepting applications on October 15th. Information workshops for applicants will be offered online. Potential applicants are strongly encouraged to attend one of these workshops to learn more about the application process and strengthen their application. The presentation will be the same at all three workshops. Workshops will be offered on three dates, all at 4.30 p.m. October 23rd 
3rd, November 14th, and December 2nd. Farmers interested in applying for an Ag Ventures grant are encouraged to sign up for one of the early workshops so they can get started on their application in a timely manner. You can register by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 1024. Now moving on to Livestock Equine Forages updates from Dalton Suits. Vote on North Carolina Cattle Industry Assessment beginning October 1st, 2024. The North Carolina Cattlemen's Association has scheduled referendum for October 30th, 2024 to decide on continuing the North Carolina Cattle Industry Assessment. This assessment proposes a $1 fee per head of cattle sold in the state aimed at advancing various aspects of the cattle and dairy industries. Funds would support youth programs, research, education, promotion efforts, and issues management. The referendum, if passed, will maintain the assessment established since 1957, with provisions for refunds and reoccurring referendums every six years upon request. Voting will be conducted at local North Carolina Cooperative Extension offices, with absentee ballots available from October 1, 2024. You can find out more by clicking Clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Chatham Agri Business Council's next meeting is October 6th. The meal starts at 6.30 and the meeting starts at 7 p.m. The Agri Business Council is a dynamic organization dedicated to fostering the growth and development of the agriculture and agribusiness sectors. They provide valuable resources, networking opportunities, and advocacy to support businesses, farmers, and industry professionals. Through programs and initiatives, they aim to drive innovation, enhance sustainability, and promote the economic vitality of the agricultural community. Membership dues are $20 per year and the meeting schedule three times a year or more as needed. For additional information, you may reach out to Extension Agent Dalton Suits. He would be happy to connect you with the Agribusiness Council. Coming in November to Virtual Animal Waste classes. Enhance your expertise and fulfill recertification requirements with our upcoming virtual animal waste classes. Each session provides three hours of credit and covers essential topics for effective animal waste management. November 7th from 9 a.m. until 12 p.m. Ventilation. Learn best practices for optimizing airflow in animal facilities. Weed management and forages. Explore strategies for controlling weeds to improve forage quality. And crop science updates. Stay informed on the latest pesticide developments. A two-hour credit applied for. The next class will be held November 19th from 1 until 4 p.m. Regulatory updates. Get up to date on the latest regulations affecting animal waste management. First aid. Gain crucial skills for handling emergencies in the field. Generator maintenance. Discover tips for maintaining generators to ensure reliable operation. And sludge management. Learn effective techniques for managing sludge to protect the environment. You can register for these two sessions by clicking on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. We want your input. We are working to develop a new livestock program for you, the producers. In order to do that, we need your input. Please take a few minutes to share what would be most beneficial to you by submitting the survey you can find in the growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 1024. Moving right along is some forestry updates from Dr. Ginger Cunningham. North Carolina State's Tree Site Selection Publication Series Part 2 is now available. The previous publication, Managing the Right Species on the Right Site, Part 1, Site Selection, focused on evaluating your site characteristics based on the species and terrain. Part 2, Managing the Right Species on the Right Site. Part 2, Species Selection focuses on choosing the best method to regenerate the next stand, depending on several factors that influence which species grow in each area of the landscape. You can decide whether to plant or naturally regenerate species depending on your area or location. You can check out the publication by clicking on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. 
Also, attend the webinars. Pre-registration is required. Managing the right species on the right site, part one. Site selection is coming up Thursday, October 10th, 2024 from 12 until 1 p.m. The link for more information and to register is available in the growing Chatham newsletter. Managing the right species on the right site, part two. Species selection will be held Thursday, October 17th, 2024 from 12 until 1 p.m. More information and to register. Register, click on the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Continuing Education Credits Society of American Foresters Certified Forester Education One Hour Category 1 Credit, which has been applied for. The Wildlife Society Certified Wildlife Biologist Professional Development Certificate Program for One Hour TWS Category 1 Credit. Credits have been applied for. Fall foliage in North Carolina and what to expect this year. With the summer transitioning into fall, North Carolina's trees will soon begin to transform form into various shades of orange, yellow, red, and purple. Peak colors can be expected from mid-October in the upper mountains to mid-November in the lower Piedmont and coastal plain. Learn more about what to expect from the fall foliage with Dr. Bob Barden of North Carolina State. Family and Consumer Sciences agent Tara Gregory continues to focus on cuisines around the world. This month, we're visiting Puerto Rico, a taste of Puerto Rican cuisine. Puerto Rican cuisine, or Cortina Criola, is a flavorful blend of indigenous Taino, Spanish, African, and American influences. Known for being well-spiced rather than spicy, many dishes rely on two key seasonings, adobo, a versatile seasoning blend, and sofrito, a mix of cilantro, onions, garlic, and bell peppers that forms the base of countless meals. You can read more in the growing Chatham newsletter and check out the recipes, sofrito and polo guisado chicken stew. Now let's head to the pumpkin patch. How do you pick and keep the perfect pumpkin? We'll find out when you visit the Growing Chatham newsletter and click on the homegrown video from North Carolina State and learn how you can pick and keep the perfect pumpkin. And don't miss Tara's demonstration on how to make simple potato salad with herbs. That will be a great addition to any autumn meal. Coming up October 8th, 2024 at 12 p.m., budgeting for the holidays. Having a budget is important during the holiday season. Learn about saving strategies in overall financial wellness while you prepare for holidays and gift giving. This is brought to you by Extension at Home, helping you improve your life. Just click on the link to register for this virtual program. And while we are on the topic of budgeting, Brandy King, Extension Administrative Assistant, shares with us managing holiday expenses and how to reduce spending to decrease. Financial stress. Urgh. Yeah, that's how I feel during the holidays. During Halloween, some ways to save money is to shop at consignment or thrift stores for costumes before the holiday. You can also be creative by looking for items that can be turned into a costume. Also, keep an eye out for costume sales rather than buying a costume at full price. Save costumes worn by older children for younger siblings to wear years later. Store costumes in a clean, dry place to maintain shape and condition from year to year. If you choose not to save costumes, consider selling your used costumes from previous years at consignment shops. Some of these shops offer buying discounts to customers, which can also help you find lower cost costumes. Be creative to create your own costume from your closets or relatives' closets. Let your children brainstorm ideas with you to help make the activity more fun. You can also search online for creative homemade costume ideas. Consider sewing costumes for from purchased patterns using inexpensive or remnant fabric. Search local ads for sales on Halloween candy. Remember to buy only what you will need so that leftover candy is not wasted. You can also buy small amounts of candy early in the time leading up to the holiday to help spread the cost over several weeks. Hope these tips help you this Halloween season. All right, here we are again. It's time for our Ag History lesson. Big 
Pumpkins, No County Fair for Showcasing? In 1939, L.D. Teague, a resident of Siler City, grew an exceptionally large pumpkin that would surely grab attention at any county fair, except for Chatham County's fair. So why didn't this remarkable pumpkin stand out at the Chatham County Fair? Well, according to the September 28, 1939 edition of the Chatham Record, there was no fair. What led to the absence of the county fair? Well, after some investigation, I uncovered the reason. Around 1929, the Fair Association lost the property due to foreclosure of a mortgage. Now, this property was then acquired by four men from Salar City. Subsequently, the state purchased the land from these individuals, which is why the fair was no longer held. The state of North Carolina transformed the fairgrounds into a convict camp, where inmates were assigned to road construction tasks. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter where you can read the actual clips from the Chatham record by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 1024. Well, we've come to the end of the Growing Chatham podcast. I will be back in November with more updates from our Chatham County Extension agents. Until then, go out and enjoy the changing colors of the leaves. I'm Tiffany Hancock for North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center.